All right, and we are going to close the day with the pediatric weight clinic. Oh, yeah, the Center for Healthy Weight. <laughs> Just a clinical uh, program. But after, after this, we're going to have more of a discussion going on. So if you want to come up towards the front anyway, it looks like a <laughs> sort of this uh, desert out there. I'd like you to move forward if you want. Also, because you stand up. Mary will be happy if you stand up. Because it's that postprandial, you know, nap time. Okay, so for um, this discussion of clinical programs, I was uh, going to talk about the clinical programs we have in pediatrics, with the main purpose being for this group to uh, identify patient populations that we have available to do research. Um, because some of you may want to work in pediatric populations. And we're already doing some uh, uh, collaborations with some of the participants, different trials in some of our um, studies. So the, the Center for Healthy Weight was developed um, to try and bring together all of the resources around campus devoted to childhood obesity prevention and treatment. And we have six areas within the, the center that we focus on. The um, research, patient care, Community programs where the, the mainly through the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital actually has community outreach and community programs that are directly implemented in the community. Uh, professional education, courses like the CME course that um, we're involved with coming up, as well as uh, um, resident um, and fellow education, of course. Uh, advocacy for public policy change and through the hospital's uh, public policy office or government affairs office. Uh, working with advocating for legislation and other changes at the local, regional, national, international levels, and building a healthy hospital as well. And we put a lot of effort into trying to make the hospital a healthier place for patients, parents, and, and visitors, as well as the employees. Um, and believe it or not, it's, it's almost tougher to change the hospital culture than it is to go change other institutions in the community. Um, but there are a lot of people trying to, to work on that. So we think of our... Um, what I think is the clinical programs as, a, as the, we, we put our pyramid upside down here for this, and we start with the, the things, the top are those with the highest volume programs or where we reach the, the highest number of people down to the lowest number of people affected, patients. And on the opposite side, it goes sort of the other direction from the lowest cost or from the highest cost at the bottom and intensity of treatment to the lowest cost the top. So like BMI and waist circumference, cost and intensity seem to be very highly correlated. The uh, start with community programs. Generally, are, we're involved in, in coalitions. Uh, there are a number of them, partnerships with individual community organizations, and then diffusion of our research projects through the, um, the SPRC Health Promotion Resource Center, as well as a, um, a project we have going to try and do technical assistance in the community. Um, to, uh, to promote evidence-based activities in, with community organizations. But that's the, the broadest reach we have in terms of these uh, clinical programs. Then our pediatric weight clinic, um, which is the closest to a, a traditional clinic setting, um, is where we uh, do mainly, as what you would expect, diagnosis, referral management, and follow-up. We meet, um, actually, one, physicians are there one half day a week. In addition, we have a second half day per week in which there's uh, diet um, counseling from dietitians as well as nurse practitioner, social work, and psychologist. Um, and so overall, we see patients two half days per week. Um, it's all a referral patient population. We get about 100, we see about 100 to 150 new patients per year. Um, and have about 700 to 800 visits, 850 visits per year. That's over the last three years. It's ranged from 700 to 850. Um, so it's averaging about four to five visits per patient per year. Um, they get an initial comprehensive assessment, diagnostic testing for um, causes and comorbidities. Uh, many of them get additional subspecialty referrals. The one thing I, I often say is if you come to our clinic, we, you leave with more diagnoses than you come in with. 
because, uh, in fact, we do find quite a bit of, for example, of fatty liver disease and other complications, even in, in young children. Um, uh, behavioral counseling occurs through our clinic, through the dietitians and the physicians, as well as all the evaluations for bariatric surgery. Um, at this point, we're really overwhelmed with the demand in the community. So even with two half days a week um, and at least one half day for new patients, we're seeing the, uh, the wait list currently is 175 patients as of this month um, who are waiting to get in and often spans about six months to get in the clinic. So we're working with different models for how to try and reduce that wait um, because we actually don't have the resources to be able to increase the volume necessarily much more than that. Um, behavioral treatment programs, uh, primarily the main behavioral treatment program is the Packard Pediatric Weight Control Program, and that's been going on for probably almost 15 years now. We started it as part of a research project. It became a clinical program. It's modified from Len Epstein's Traffic Light um, Family-Based Group Behavioral Program. Uh, so we see families uh, in groups. Um, we have groups for 8 to 12-year-old and 13 to 15-year-old English-speaking families, as well as 8 to 12-year-old uh, Spanish-speaking families. Uh, they have to have a BMI over the 95th percentile or um, 85th percentile with comorbidities associated with it. Both the child and the parent must want to attend and agree to attend the sessions. Um, it is, did I put it on here? It's 25 sessions over six months. So it's weekly sessions for six months, so fairly intensive. Um, and, oh yeah, it is, six months of weekly meetings. Mean percent overweight at the start is 71%, um, ranging from about 27% to 142%. So that means the average patient coming into a, this program starts out with a BMI that is 70% 70 70 greater than what we expect them to be for their age and sex. And in, and in kids, uh, as you probably know, BMI changes with age, so we can't just draw a cutoff of 25 or 30 or 35. So it changes with age normally, and so we base it upon their, the relationship to what we expect their BMI to be, the, the median BMI at the age for their age and sex um, according to national standards. The, uh, the financing for it at this point is, is either self-pay or financial assistance or scholarships or through research studies. Um, up to now, in terms of the uh, excluding research studies, about 80% of the families get some type of financial assistance, and that's through the hospital mainly. We don't have any payers that have been willing to pay for this. We had a trial at one point with uh, Santa Clara Family Health Plan, but that, it, it ended. Um, it's, it's basically uh, something that no one agrees to pay for, none of the third party payers, which is a major problem. The, um, our results, this is just a, about 200 patients, uh, I think it's about 200 patients, shown as, like Christopher did, in sort of the whole range of weight changes over time. Here, this is not weight, but change in percent overweight. And so we see it ranges from close to 40% reduction, so that'd be from, say, double the expected weight to only 60% uh, over the expected weight type of thing. So 40% reduction up to um, a minority of kids who continue to gain weight even through the program, which is not unusual, of course. And the, uh, the, the, the lighter gray bars are the Spanish-speaking uh, patients in this cohort to show you that they're really, we get similar effects in both Spanish and English-speaking groups. 85%, um, which is really amazing, for 85% complete the entire six-month program or complete the six-month program. In the literature, um, most programs have about a 50% dropout within the first month or with, by the second visit, usually. 85% um, of completers decrease their weight. Um, the mean change in percent overweight has been minus 8, although now I think it's more like around minus 10. And, uh, and more than 75% of the overweight parents lose weight, an average of about five pounds, with a maximum has been 45 pounds. And that's been a real bonus, even though we don't concentrate at the parents at all on treatment, it's all focused on the, the kids. Also, we've seen a significant reduction in depressive symptoms. Um, drug and behavioral clinical trials, we had a, uh, a metformin trial for adolescents that is now completed, that was one study that's done. We also, these are two ongoing trials that we're recruiting for now, if you happen to know any families uh, who want to participate. Um, and here, one is, involves the family-based group behavioral treatment in addition to half the families are randomized to home coaching to change their eating and screen time environments in the home. 
Um, and they're followed for a total of 18 months with six months of sort of active treatment. Um, and then the new Stanford Goals trial, of which we're just now recruiting for a pilot project with 40 new participants uh, over the 85th percentile. And this is moving treatment from the clinical setting to the community setting in which uh, they will be involved in after school team sports, home visits, the same type of home coaching visits, and a primary care uh, physician intervention, which uh, they will receive as well. And that is uh, uh, contrasted with a group randomized to health education, more standard health education. And that is going to be a three year intervention and follow up, which is pretty unprecedented as well. And that's going to be 240 families when we get that up and rolling totally. Um, intensive medical treatment is something we haven't done much of, but that would be, for example, hospitalizing patients with, on, uh, on the protein-modified fast, for example, or doing outpatient protein-modified fast. Um, our neurologists use those quite a bit for, for seizures. Um, we have not been uh, using them a lot. People usually regain the weight um, on those. Uh, they're very difficult to stick with for them, but it's something that we would use in, in situations where there are... Um, uh, uh, complications and, and patients are not either severe enough or not candidates for surgery. And finally, uh, bariatric surgery, and it's too bad John's not here because he, John Morton, as well as Craig Albanese, the head of uh, pediatric uh, surgery, do the bariatric surgery um, program. We were the first children's hospital to offer gastric bypass surgery to adolescents, first in, in California, with the idea being not only did we have a skill set for that, but we wanted to make sure it was pediatric specialists doing the care of patients if they were going to get bariatric surgery. This is only children who really have life-threatening complications of their, of, uh, of their obesity. And um, to date, we have done about 40 operations, I think, since 2004. Uh, so it's not like we're, we're doing as many as, or anywhere near the, the number that you're doing in adults, or even anywhere near some of the bigger centers are doing, like Cincinnati Children's does the most. Um, and, uh, and actually, the most popular operation now uh, is the gastric sleeve. About, I think about half the patients are doing gastric bypass, half are doing the, the sleeve operations now, um, which is different. Where they don't, I think, get as much weight loss, but we'll see. John's really the expert um, on that. Too, but it's also it's an easier operation to perform, I believe, for them. And luckily, we've yet to have any severe complications in any of these kids, because that's something that we're very concerned about as well. Um, so those are the clinical programs that really make up the, the Center for Healthy Weight. And so hopefully, there are, there are adolescent and childhood populations out there, patient populations, who are um, all very interested in participating, or many of them very interested in participating in clinical trials or other research as well. And we have a number of, of other pro or projects that have gone on. So if you have interest in, in using these populations for research, uh, as participants in research, um, please let us know, because uh, it's a good resource. And they certainly need the, the services and the, and the help. So that's it. Thanks. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.